Hello folks, uh, I'm with Richard today. He is one of the leading consultants we have in the United Kingdom. Uh, we just met in the International Procurement and Supply Chain Conference. Mm -hmm. And some of the thoughts from Richard is actually eye-opening and I thought we should capture for the supply chain audience. But before we, we go to those, uh, those concepts, uh, Richard, do you mind introducing yourself, please? No, delighted. So, uh, Richard Beaumont. Um, many of you might know me through uh, ProcureCon uh, events. Uh, my background, I was an army officer 14 years, uh, then supply chain director for RMD Quickform, part of InterServe, uh, then ran a financial services company, uh, then set up a company running apprenticeships for young people. I did two years with McKinsey um, and then pretty much went full bore procurement with uh, uh, VP procurement at Rolls Royce, uh, followed by uh, CPO at Co-op Bank. And since 2015, I've been working for myself supporting large companies and SMEs in the procurement space. And a big part of that, of course, is procurement conferences. So, yeah. Conferences. Yeah. Right. so cool. pleased, to, pleased to meet you. I think yesterday there was a very interesting question of and the, the strong debate because all the sub procurement pros, the CPO should have a table on the board, right? Should be uh, part of okay. the C-level. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think you have some very interesting thoughts. What, what do you think? Okay, so the, um, everyone from SIPs uh, will know my view on this, which is, I actually, there's no problem, you know, it's a great thing if uh, a company decides that the CPO should be on the board. Uh, if not on the board, maybe in the executive committee. Um, great. I just don't think it's essential. And, and the reason I don't think it's essential is because procurement is not about your position in the business. It's about your ability to influence. And you don't gain an ability to influence simply by virtue of your, your job title. For me, and much more relevant for the future, is that what makes procurement great and what makes people successful in procurement are soft skills. The ability to influence, the ability to uh, negotiate, the ability to network, the ability to collaborate, and the ability to bring that all together into the chance to innovate for a business. That doesn't come with a job title. Yep. For me, it's much more important that you've just found the right person with the right skills, and if they're able to execute them, frankly, they could be a junior buyer or they could be a CPO somewhere else. And I just think we need to give up this idea that if they're not on the board, somehow procurement has missed a trick. It's yep. just not true. No, perfect. I, I think there was a strong discussion about, and I have experience with, I work for the boss, who's yeah. mostly not a procurement guy. Yeah, he yeah. or she really doesn't understand what I'm doing, what should I do, and I, I think you had a fantastic answer to this. So what, what, okay. what, what one should do in that scenario? Well, do you know what, I think it's, um, I, maybe I break people's hearts, but um, your boss doesn't care about procurement. The way that you've run a great RFP or the way that we've got a great outcome is just not important. What matters is whether or not procurement, like it does when it's trying to source something, has found out what your boss needs. And if you've addressed your CEO's concerns, your CEO's needs, and they might be PL, they might be risk, it might be brand support through CSR or sustainability, once you've engaged with the CEO in terms of what matters to him, then you can focus your delivery on meeting those needs and then the CEO is going to be interested in you. But I'm sorry if you're feeling hard done by because you're doing a great job and no one's clapping you on the back. That's just the way it is. That's the way it is, that's the way it is. Yeah. I think you had some really good uh, examples to you know, talk about the transformation of the procurement function. So I know it's a huge topic, yeah, right. but if you say the top three things one should do to transform procurement function, what, what, what are the tips you will get? Okay, so uh, I always use this example of a, a steam-powered Tesla, right? Yeah. Which is that we think we're going to transform, so we go and investigate all the things that could achieve that transformation. Yeah and then we don't give up the way that we've been operating yeah. and we try and bolt a new approach into an old way of working and we literally end up with a steam-powered Tesla. And you know, the, a very good example. You know, the, the, the easiest way to put this is, yeah. you could go and buy any one of a number of strategic sourcing e-tools. Yeah. And all of them are good because they've been developed with customers who like and use them. So my challenge is, is if you're going to buy an e-tool, why would you spend time and money trying to re-engineer it yeah. so that it follows your old process, old process 
why not just change your process change and adopt process. the tool? Absolutely correct. So this would be number one. Don't, don't keep the old, adopt the new. Just Absolutely. like you haven't put water, fire and coal into a Tesla. You yeah. just buy a Tesla and you use it. And it works. It, it does. Perfect. I, I think it's a classic example and I'll probably using it and hopefully I'll give a reference to, to Richard, right? Uh, I, another thing, I think we have a very, I think both of us have a very common view how the procurement function will change with the advent of technological changes, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And I think you have a very, very valuable, the way you see future in terms, and I want to focus on not on technology, in terms of roles and responsibility of procurement and maybe what a new people who wants to join the procurement yeah, function, yeah. They, should, they should do. So, what do you think? No, uh, look, it's a great question. And I think um, for many businesses, it looks like it's a long way away. So there are conversations going on around AI, RPA, machine intelligence, about Google Duplex, about getting rid of uh, people, about knowledge and online BI and analytics. And for many businesses, they look at this and it just looks like something that really is rocket science that's not going to come. The truth is, many businesses are already operating with this and it's going to come a lot quicker than you think. In the same way that when a new app comes on your phone, yep. we don't wait for years to get it. If it's there, we adopt it. The, the challenge is, is that when uh, this technology arrives, the single biggest impact is it is going to get rid of repetitive manual tasks. Yeah, yeah. And I hate to say it, but the role of the buyer is going to go. It's going yeah. to disappear. Yeah. And it's going to disappear because all of the tasks that we associate with that, so market research, supplier research, prepare, preparation of uh, tender documents, RFP documents, analyzing responses, they're just going to get done by, by, by machines. What does that mean? It means the entry into our profession is going to be category manager. And why does that matter? It's because the category manager is a creative role. Absolutely correct. It is those soft skills of engagement, it is the networking across suppliers and customers, and it's identifying innovation. Excellent. And quite frankly, I think lots of people who want to join our profession are going to yeah. be really happy that those drudgery, boring, repetitive yeah. tasks have disappeared. disappeared. Yeah. But this now settles a very old debate. Because if you think uh, getting the procurement seat on the board was, a, was an old chestnut, yeah. the other one is, is it better to get someone with functional knowledge and yeah. train them to do procurement? Yeah. Or do you have a good procurement person and so train them in the knowledge of yeah. the category? Easy. We're not going to have junior procurement people. Yeah. We're going to be recruiting people straight in a category manager. That means we're going to recruit people with knowledge of categories and we're going to train them how to be category managers. And the skills we're going to look for are not the ability to do strategic sourcing, because yeah. we can teach that. We can teach that. It's all of those soft skills that are going to enable them to network. Absolutely. And that's what it's going to look like. Absolutely. I mean, fantastic, fantastic thoughts. I think because of your experience, I would like to share with the with the followers of SCM Dujo, you know, an in, in, interesting story, right? Exactly. Yeah, so maybe anything short and sweet. Oh my goodness. Stories um, are good, right? Yeah, stories are good. I mean, I think, look, if I, if I look across all the things that I have done, and I'll be completely honest, some have gone well and some have gone really badly. And, and, and that's, just, that's just part of life. I think my, my, my biggest experience of all was trying to implement a, an e-tool. Yep. And I am guilty of creating the steam-powered Tesla, um, yep. which is why I am now so cautious of it. And the consequent was that although we did everything right, we engaged people to talk about what the process was. We identified the right tool. We had a great implementation team with external support. It still went wrong mm -hmm. because we were not bold enough to be able to just say, do you know what? Our old 137 step process, don't laugh, but that's how many there were. Trying to get a new tool to follow 137 steps whether you were buying a pen or whether you were buying a piece of technology, just didn't work. And if nothing else, that um, was my big learning. And I'm going to admit my second one, sort your data out. Sort your data out, absolutely. Supplies and procurement, guys. Oh my God. If you, do, do, it if, do it now. If you do not have the 
the basis of data right i can promise yeah. you that my friend you cannot improve yeah, shit right. you cannot well, worse yeah. nothing that you spend money on will work will work right? will work you know you know i can sit with richard and we can talk for hours <laughs> but i know people don't have time i don't have time he needs to i need to take a flight and he has just have one more one more class to get richard it's been pleasure i'm uh, sure this is not the you. first time uh, meeting know, i'll be sure. in uk i'm sure i'll okay, find you we'll have one one more session thank Perfect. you for your time hey, appreciate it you. cheers bye -bye. yeah bye. i aim to do knowledge videos and interviews with procurement and supply chain professionals and leaders consider subscribing to this channel and i have written practical guides on supply chain see the link below Thank you.